Hello, everyone, and welcome to the information session for the 2024 Artist Support Grant application. Um, so I'll jump right in. First, I just wanted to introduce myself and my co-host today. My name is Kelly Schrader. I'm the Community Arts Coordinator for United Arts, and I'm the direct contact for this program. So if you have any questions, need assistance, or have accessibility requests, you can reach out to me. Uh, joining us today is also Lisa McIntosh, United Arts Director of Communications, who will be helping ensure the session runs smoothly, and Veronica Gutierrez, who will be offering live Spanish interpretations during this session. So thank you, Lisa and Veronica, for your help today. So today I'll be talking about the ASG program, eligibility requirements for applicants, the application itself, as well as the review process. And we will have time at the end for questions. So free, feel free to hold on to your questions until the end, or you can drop them in the chat as we go and I can respond to them at the end. If you have extremely specific questions about your own individual application or proposal, I encourage you to reach out to me directly via email so that we can discuss your application one-on-one -on -one after this session. Okay, so let's get started. This session will be recorded and posted to the United Arts YouTube page for continued reference. Um, there are also auto-generated captions available for use. Just click on that CC icon on your screen to enable captions. Spanish interpretations are also available today. You click the globe icon and switch over to the Spanish channel. And we will have time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. So again, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Really quickly, for those of you not aware of United Arts or who we are, I just wanted to mention that United Arts offers all kinds of support to the county such as our Artists in Schools program, our other grant programs for organizations and towns. We have arts integration programs for educators, and we also have a Wake Murals program that places murals around the county, and we help run a Piedmont Laureate program. So in addition to those programs, we manage the Artist Support Grant program which is largely funded by the North Carolina Arts Council to support individual artists across North Carolina. United Arts distributes artist support grant funds to five counties, and those are Wake, Harnett, Chatham, Johnston, and Lee. Through this program, individual artists, as well as unincorporated groups of artists, can apply for up to $1,500 to support their professional and artistic development. The current application is for funding for the 2024 calendar year. So awarded funds for this cycle must be spent between January and December of 2024. So that's the calendar year of 2024. The deadline to apply for this cycle is September 1st, 2023. And just for some context on the scale of this program, last year we awarded $84,000 across 59 out of the 76 applications that we received. So funding for artist support grants comes from United Arts, Raleigh Arts, and the North Carolina Arts Council. Okay, so who is eligible to apply for these funds? Artist support grants are open to all genres and artistic disciplines. Artists at any stage in their career may apply. So whether you're just starting out or if you've been a practicing artist for years, you're eligible to apply. This program is for individual artists, but groups of unincorporated artists may also apply. Meaning if you're part of a music group or an artist collective or are collaborating with one or more other artists on your project, then you're welcome to apply as a group or collective as long as you're not incorporated. So for example, if you are part of a rap group that is also an LLC, you cannot apply as an LLC, but you could still apply as an individual as part of the group. 
if uh, you and your artist collective run a business or a nonprofit together, the business or the nonprofit cannot apply for funding, but the individuals can still apply. So if you have specific questions about your situation, just reach out to me before starting your application and we can make sure you're eligible. All applicants must be at least 18 years of age to apply, be a US citizen or permanent resident, and they must currently reside within one of those five counties for this program. Again, that's Chatham, Harnett, Johnston, Lee, or Wake County. Not only do you need to reside in those counties, but you must have lived in that service area for at least one year from the application deadline. So if you've lived in one or more of those counties since or before September 1st of 2022, then you're eligible. If you live in a, a different county that is not one of those five counties, then you should reach out to your county's Arts Council for your county's grant application. Finally, if previous grantees must wait at least one year to apply again, so if you got funds for 2023, you cannot apply this year, but you can apply next year. And remember, if you are applying as part of a group, then all members in the group must meet all of the eligibility requirements. Okay, now that we know who is eligible, let's talk about who is not eligible to apply. These are specific situations that don't apply to most folks, but if they apply to you, or if you're not sure if they apply to you, then email me before putting in a bunch of work on your application. So groups that have received any form of direct funding from the North Carolina Arts Council for 2023 or 2024 are not eligible to apply to this program. Current board and staff members of Chatham Arts Council, Harnett County Government, Johnston County Arts Council, Lee County Arts Council or the United Arts Council for Wake County, as well as their immediate family members are not eligible to receive funds. That would be a conflict of interest. So I cannot apply for this grant. Arts Council board members cannot apply for this grant, nor can their children or spouses. Another ineligible group is currently enrolled students. So students enrolled in any degree seeking program are not eligible to apply for this funding. However, if you will graduate before the 2024 calendar year, you could still apply because you will not be actively enrolled during the grant project period, which is 2024. And as I said before, 2023 grantees may not apply for funding from this cycle. You have to wait until next year. Okay, so what exactly does the Artist Support Grant fund? What kinds of items can you request for funding within your application? So this program is designed to support the growth of artists. So there are a wide variety of things that you can apply for funding for. Some examples of appropriate requests would be to fund a specific project that will enhance your skills or allow you to experiment with new tools or new skills an idea or a project that will enhance your abilities to create work or something that will improve your capacity to bring your work to new audiences. So you don't need a specific project to apply with. Applicants can also request funding for general items that will just help them in their careers, such as uh, creating or presenting new work, like buying art supplies, buying equipment, renting studio space, purchasing frames for new works. Uh, funds may go towards promoting your career, such as costs for web hosting or design, documenting your work or other marketing costs. Uh, funding could also go towards training, like attending workshops or conferences, as well as travel that is relevant to a project or uh, that training. So if you go to a conference, or you want to attend a workshop series, then uh, part of your funding could be for the gas, hotel, and food costs during that trip. So these are all examples of appropriate funding requests, but that is not an exhaustive list. 
And I wanted to take an emphasize a second to emphasize that this program aims to directly fund artists by putting unrestricted funds into artists' hands. So when you apply for funding, up to half of your budget can be used to pay yourself. We refer to this as an artist fee, and that is funds that be, can be kept for yourself for any use, and you don't need to report to us on how those funds were spent. So basically, if you write your application requesting the full $1,500, and you have half or $750, going towards marketing, supplies, or other appropriate costs, then the remaining $750, half of that, can be an artist fee that you keep for yourself. So if you're requesting $1,000, then up to $500 can go to pay yourself, and so on. It's half of your grant funds can be kept to pay yourself. So while there are a large variety of things that this grant will fund, there are some things that are ineligible requests for funding. Applications requesting funding for these items will not be considered, so be sure to stay away from requests for funding going towards any tuition or scholarship costs such as uh, textbooks or lab fees, anything for degree-seeking programs, because remember, currently enrolled students are not eligible for this program. Projects that support or oppose a political campaign or a political candidate or projects that are exclusive to certain religious groups are also not eligible. If your project involves working with an initiative on a, a nonprofit organization and that nonprofit will benefit from these funds, that is also an ineligible request. These funds are for individuals and not organizations. There are separate funding sources for organizations. And lastly, any funding requests should be focused on your growth and development as an artist. So if your application doesn't include anything that would help to benefit your practice or your career, it would not be funded. Okay, so evaluation criteria. Here is a rubric for the application to give you an idea of how to fulfill these three areas of evaluation criteria. This rubric, as well as everything I'm talking about in this session today and all the materials can be found on United Arts website. And you're also on our website able to download this rubric in English and in Spanish. Um, this rubric and all this information is shared with our community panelists, and this is what is used to review and score your applications during the review process. So the three areas to focus on in your application are artistic merit, project feasibility, and professional development. I'll review what that means to score highly in these areas, but I really encourage you to take the time to go to our website and look at this rubric and read it completely before you submit your application. So artistic merit means that the applicant shows a serious commitment to pursuing or maintaining a career in the arts. For example, a painter who is trying to display their work in galleries or learn new techniques would score higher than someone who paints for fun on the weekends or just occasionally. Project feasibility means that your goals are realistic and achievable, that your project is likely to be successful. So another example, a band who's been performing together for a while looking to cut their first record would be a more feasible project than someone who has just picked up an instrument trying to record an album straight away. So your goals with this funding should align with where you are in your career. The last area is professional development, or if this funding would be meaningful in expanding or promoting your career as an artist. So a sculptor requesting funds for supplies to create a new body of work in order to apply for exhibitions would score higher than a sculptor requesting funding for supplies without any goals of how that would improve their skills or their practice or as an artist. A key thing with professional development is that your application should include how the funded items will help you grow as an artist. All right, now I'll talk about the review process for applications. 
Once all applications have been submitted, they are first reviewed by United Arts staff to ensure that each application is fully eligible, that the applicants meet the residency requirements, um, and eligible applications are then sorted into panels based on your artistic discipline. So each panel will consist of three or four community panelists who will review and score the applications based on that rubric that I just mentioned. Panelists are assigned based on their knowledge and expertise of each respective artistic discipline. So music apps are reviewed by musicians, dance apps by dancers, et cetera. Selected panelists, they might be established artists or arts professors, arts administrators, or otherwise experienced and knowledgeable about that discipline. Panelists are also anonymous. After the panel review process, funding recommendations are reviewed and they must be approved by both United Arts staff as well as United Arts board. And funded applications are notified in December, whether you receive funding or not. Grant funds are awarded at the start of the calendar year in January of 2024. Okay, so the application. All right, I'm moving over to the United Arts website. Now we'll briefly walk you through the application. So on our website, you can find links to the guidelines, rubric, and application in both English and Spanish. So I am going to open the application in English and our application portal is submittable. If you've never used this platform before, you will have to make an account, but it's completely free. And the great thing about Submittable is that it will save your progress within the application once you sign in. Okay, so here's the application. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to read all of the instructions thoroughly and carefully for each section. Do not rush through this application. So the first section is identifying and contact information, your name, your artist group name, address, contact info, as well as things like your website and artistic discipline. Then we have a section for demographic information, which all of this is self-identifying and optional. And right here in the next section is where you will put your grant amount request. And this number cannot exceed $1,500. After that is an area for you to sum up your funding request. Just a simple statement of what you are looking to fund. And after that, we get into the actual meat of the application where we ask for a full project description. So this is where you lay out the who, what, where, when, why, and how of your project in the project description. So be sure to include attainable project goals and how you plan to reach them with this funding. So we also ask for an artist statement and a CV or resume. Um, Pre-existing ones are fine. You do not need to create a new statement or resume for this application. But if you do not already have these items that exist, I strongly encourage you to make them and save copies for future use. Uh, next, we ask for your project budget. And remember, up to 50% of your funds can be kept to pay yourself an artist fee. And uh, these expenses is where you would put the list of items that you're looking to fund and their amounts. There's also a project income area where you can list other sources of funding if you have them, if that's applicable to you. So under the budget section, we do ask for you to document your budget, meaning how did you come up with the numbers in your budget? So for example, here I am requesting a $100 microphone, $400 for a sound engineer, and $250 for to hire a web designer. So to strengthen this request, we really wanna see where these numbers came from that you didn't just make them up or guess at how much something might cost. We wanna see evidence that you've budgeted these amounts. So an example with this would be, 
Uh, I would include a screenshot off of Amazon of the price of the microphone that I wanted. I could include a screenshot from the sound engineer's website where they list costs of services. I could also include a copy of the quote that I got from the web designer when I asked about how much it would cost to redesign a website. So those items you could include in the budget documentation section. Now budget documentation is an optional section, but it goes a long way in strengthening your request because it shows the panelists that you've put time, planning, and thought into your budget. And then we have a section for work samples where you can upload those directly or you can link to an online portfolio. We also have an optional section for additional supporting documents or letters of recommendation. This is where you can include anything else that you just want the panelists to know when reviewing your application. Okay, back to my slides. Just a couple things I wanna reiterate. For your budget, remember that all of your funds must be spent during the project period for the grant, which is the calendar year of 2024 for this cycle. Up to half of your budget can be kept to pay yourself an artist fee, and all items in your budget should be consistent with your project description and your overall goals for this funding. Someone should read your project description, read your budget, and they should make sense. They should go together. And a couple things about work samples. Be sure to include them. Uh, work samples should be high quality images, videos, or whatever other file type is relevant to your artistic discipline. The work samples that you include should be relevant to your funding request. For example, maybe you're a painter, but you also weld, you build furniture, you make music, and you do all of these other great things. But in your application, you're asking for funding for painting supplies. Then you should really only include work samples of your painting and not really all those unrelated projects. It kind of makes your application confusing. So you wanna make sure they're relevant work samples to your funding request. Uploaded samples should be of your work only. No one should ever claim another person's work as their own. Another key thing to remember is that the panelists going over your application will only have access to what you provide within your application. Panelists cannot and will not spend extra time tracking down your work online if it is not included or linked within your application. So be sure to include everything you want them to see or know about you in the actual application. Okay, so this is my last slide and then I'm gonna open it up for questions. Um, so if you receive a grant, all applicants will be notified in December of 2023 if you've been selected for a grant or not. If you do receive funding, there's a grantee agreement that all grantees must sign before you can receive funds. Once that agreement is signed, you do receive the entirety of your funds up front. And within that agreement, there's also details on how to credit or acknowledge United Arts for your grant, as well as some other things to know as a grantee. So I do host a grantee workshop every year with more details and to answer any questions for grantees, but I'm also available year round for additional support. Whether you get funded or not, you can always reach out to me for support and to ask any questions. So if you do get funded, remember all of the funds must be spent by December 31st, 2024. This is for funding for calendar year 2024. At the close of the year, we do send out a very simple, straightforward final report, but that is required for all grantees to submit a final report. So again, all of this information is shared with grantees after they receive funding. Okay, so that is all that I have. I do wanna um, open up for questions. Um, I have Lisa who has been monitoring the chat for me. If you did drop any questions in the chat, um, feel free to unmute yourself as well if you do have questions. There's also a button where you can raise your hand if you wanna do that and Lisa can call on you. Um, and remember, if you do have extremely specific questions about your individual circumstances, please email me directly so that I have enough time today to address as many questions as possible. 
Um, I also wanted to mention that if anyone needs additional help or a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, feel free to reach out and email me. I'm going to drop my email in the chat once again, just so everyone has it. It is up on the screen. So this is my email, just so everyone has it. And if you require a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a Spanish translator, we are offering sessions at Diamante Arts and Cultural Center on Sunday, August 13th. And you can sign up for one of those sessions if you need a Spanish interpreter. I'm dropping that link 